SpaceX has resumed the pre-launch ground tests of Starship 25 in order to get it ready for the upcoming orbital flight test. SpaceX attempted a spin prime test of Ship 25 on Wednesday, however, the test was aborted after engine chill for some unknown reason. In a spin prime test, the engine's turbo pumps are brought up to their full speed and propellants are pumped through the combustion chamber, but there will be no ignition. A successful spin prime test will be followed by a static fire test. Per the road closure notice, SpaceX will attempt the aborted spin prime test as early as Tuesday, June 20. Prior to the aborted spin prime test on June 14, SpaceX tested the forward and aft flaps of Ship 25, ensuring they were functioning as expected. Ship 25 has already undergone five cryogenic proof tests, and the upcoming static fire tests will prepare Ship 25 for the test flight. Starship 25 is different from its predecessor, Ship 24, in many aspects. Let's go through a series of tweets posted by the Ring Watchers to learn about those differences. A significant visible difference is the relocation of the payload bay access hatch and the two outward-facing cameras. They are now much closer to the ship's leeward side. The methane tank pressure control vents have also been relocated nearer the heat shield. However, this change was reverted on all vehicles built after Ship 25. Ship 25's payload bay features some redesigned reinforcements, compared to Ship 24. Second-generation Starlink satellites were supposed to be deployed into orbit from Ship 25 during the flight test. However, just like on Ship 24, the plan was dropped, and the payload bay on Ship 25 was welded shut. The stringers over the forward dome have been shortened on Ship 25, and the steel strip covering them has a new weld pattern. The strip is included so the heat tiles can be installed on a smooth surface. Ship 25's aft flaps are slightly modified, now missing the black material on the hinge, which possibly was related to thermal protection. Ship 25 will be joined by Super Heavy Booster 9 on the second orbital test flight of the Starship. Booster 9, which has already completed two cryoproof tests, is currently inside the Mega Bay, with all 33 engines installed and ready for firing. Booster 9 static fire tests will begin once the orbital launch pad repairs and rebuild are complete. Once Ship 25 and Booster 9 successfully complete their ground tests, next major milestone will be the full stack, followed by a wet dress rehearsal ahead of the test flight. According to Elon Musk, SpaceX aims to launch Starship again in six to eight weeks. However, that timeline may be ambitious, given the amount of preparation needed before the flight. SpaceX could also face some regulatory hurdles, as a coalition of environmental organizations is currently suing the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, on the grounds that the agency failed to adequately assess the potential harm that a starship could cause to the human communities near Starbase in South Texas, and the ecosystem there. Work to install the water deluge system and steel plates under the launch mount is progressing rapidly. Piling work has been completed, and teams have begun placing rebars under the launch mount. Later concrete will be poured over the rebar to form a strong foundation for the water-cooled steel plates. The water supply manifold and steel plates are being pre-assembled at the Sanchez site. The plates will be transported to the launch site in the near future. As per Musk's estimate in May, the steel plate installation would be completed by the end of this month. Two giant horizontal storage tanks arrived at the Starbase launch site on June 10. The tanks, part of the water deluge system, were installed over the custom-build cradles behind the launch tower. SpaceX currently has vehicles in various stages of completion at Starbase. Ship 25 to Ship 29 are either fully stacked or very nearly, and up to Ship 35 are under construction. On the booster side, Booster 9 has completed two cryoproof tests, and Booster 10 and 11 need Raptor engine installation. Boosters 12 through 16 are currently in various phases of construction. Super Heavy Booster 12's oxygen tank section stacking is nearing completion inside the Mega Bay. The methane downcomer was installed into the oxygen tank section on June 15. Booster 12 methane tank sections were moved into the Mega Bay last week, and SpaceX has begun the methane tank stacking operations. Construction of the new Mega Bay north of the existing Mega Bay is rapidly progressing. Teams have started installing the prefabricated section of the second level of the Mega Bay atop the first level. Star Factory expansion works are also progressing at the production site. The new Mega Bay in the Star Factory will increase SpaceX's Starship production pace. On June 15, NASA announced it had partnered with seven U.S. companies, including SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Northrop Grumman, to advance space capabilities. The agency aims to assist the commercial space industry in developing a robust low-Earth orbit economy. The companies can benefit from NASA's extensive expertise, and in the future, the agency can be a customer of the capabilities included in the agreements. Each company will pay for their participation in the program.
As part of the initiative, all companies submitted proposals that NASA representatives evaluated. SpaceX proposed using Starship as an in-space low-Earth orbit destination. In other words, Starship will operate like a space station in orbit that astronauts can visit to perform scientific research in microgravity, similar to what they do now at the International Space Station. This architecture includes Starship as a transportation and in-space low-Earth orbit destination element, supported by Super Heavy, Dragon, and Starlink, and constituent capabilities including crew and cargo transportation, communications, and operational and ground support. The other companies had different proposals that are still under development. Please check out the link in the description to learn about their submitted proposals. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. SpaceX recently launched several dozen smallsats into orbit and landed the rocket back on Earth, marking the 200th touchdown in the company's history. A Falcon 9 rocket lifted from Vandenberg Space Force Base on June 12, kicking off SpaceX's eight dedicated smallsat rideshare mission, Transporter 8. The launch vehicle carried 72 spacecraft of varying sizes and purposes into Earth's orbit. After stage separation, the rocket's first stage returned to Earth for a vertical touchdown at Vandenberg, marking the ninth launch and landing for this particular booster and the 200th overall recovery of a Falcon booster. All 72 satellites were deployed as planned from the rocket's upper stage, separating over a 25-minute span beginning an hour after liftoff. The rideshare mission included several technology milestones, including Varda Space Industries' first satellite, W Series 1, built by Rocket Lab. The spacecraft contains a 120 kg capsule that will produce pharmaceutical products in microgravity. Those products will be brought back to Earth in a return capsule on the spacecraft. Spire Global had two satellites on board, equipped with optical inter satellite link payloads to transmit data in space while up to 5,000 km apart. Space logistics company Launcher deployed an orbiter space tug on the mission, carrying four satellites and several hosted payloads. Rideshare provider ExoLaunch launched 32 satellites on the mission for 11 customers, and the U.S. military used the mission to launch several of its satellites. The mission also launched several Earth observation satellites for a variety of customers. In addition to companies flying their satellites, Australian company Newman Space flew its first Newman Drive electric thruster, which uses a solid metal rod as fuel. Please check out the link in the description for the complete list of 72 satellites launched on the Transporter 8 mission. Rocket Lab is gearing up for its mystery launch, which is scheduled for sometime between June 17 and 20 from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility. According to a tweet from NASA Wallops, no live stream is planned for launch, and the Wallops Visitor Center will not be open. Rocket Lab has not disclosed any information regarding its upcoming launch, although it's believed that the company will be flying its suborbital testbed rocket for the first time. In April, Rocket Lab unveiled a new testbed launch vehicle that the company says will accelerate the development of hypersonic technology. Called HASTE, for Hypersonic Accelerator Suborbital Test Electron, the rocket is derived from the company's Electron vehicle, which has launched several missions to space since 2018. HASTE employs the same innovative carbon composite structure and 3D printed Rutherford engines as Electron, but has a modified kick stage for hypersonic payload deployment, a larger payload capacity of up to 700 kg, and options for tailored fairings to accommodate larger payloads. HASTE is mainly operated under Rocket Lab's national security subsidiary, created to serve the unique needs of the U.S. defense and intelligence communities. In April, Rocket Lab announced that Haste would debut in the first half of 2023 from the company's pad at Wallops. Therefore, it is plausible that Haste is the mystery vehicle flying from Wallops in the next few days. The BP Colombo mission is gearing up for its third close flyby of Mercury on June 19 on its way to an orbital insertion around the planet. The mission, a joint effort of the European Space Agency and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, was launched in 2018 to orbit and study Mercury from unique vantage points. With its two probes, the Mercury Planetary Orbiter and the Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter, BP Colombo will be the second mission ever to orbit Mercury, and the most complex one. BP Colombo must travel a long way before it can study Mercury. The spacecraft will perform several gravity assist flybys to pick up speed before reaching the planet. It passed the Earth in April 2020, Venus in 2020 and 2021, and Mercury twice between 2021 and 2022. On June 19, during its third flyby, the spacecraft will pass Mercury's surface at an altitude of about 236 kilometers. At the moment of close approach, BP Colombo will have accelerated to 5.4 kilometers per second with respect to Mercury, courtesy of the planet's gravitational pull. 
Still, the flyby will reduce the spacecraft's velocity magnitude compared to the sun by 0.8 km per second and change its direction by 2.6 degrees. The illuminated part of the planet will only enter the spacecraft's field of view around 13 minutes after close approach, when BP Colombo is at a distance of about 1,840 km. The most visually appealing images showing the details of Mercury's surface will be captured soon after. Many of the spacecraft's scientific instruments will be switched on to collect data during the close approach. The first science results from the flyby will be published on June 20. After three more flybys, BP Colombo will arrive at Mercury in December 2025. Upon arrival, the spacecraft's two science modules will separate and enter complementary orbits around the planet to gather data during its one-year nominal mission, with a possible one-year extension. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.